Okay, very good. Well, let's quickly review the um, the first two sessions. Session one, uh, we talked uh, about what the word Advent means. Of course, uh, it means coming. Uh, during Advent, we celebrate the, the coming of Christ at Bethlehem, his coming into our hearts. And then we also celebrate his second coming, and that is, uh, that's a key element of Advent worship. Uh, for four weeks before Christmas, uh, our worship calls us into a time to wait for the coming of the Lord. Uh, we, we begin at uh, what may seem a distance uh, from the coming of Christ and then proceed closer each week uh, thematically, visually, um, in, in various ways to, uh, to the week of his birth. Uh, so worship uh, during the first two weeks emphasizes the second coming of Christ and the need to prepare for his, uh, for his return. Uh, the second two weeks, of course, then uh, for for his uh, uh, when he was uh, born in, in the manger, uh, as the uh, as the late uh, theologian Robert Weber once said, and I'll just read this here: uh, Christ has come, and His coming prepares us for His coming in glory, and His continual coming to us in word and sacrament. God gives us at Advent the story of His coming, and that story prepares us to receive Him whenever He confronts our lives. When you think about these words, you, you really get a sense of just how spiritually powerful Advent can be. It, it's, uh, it's one of the most uh, powerful seasons of the Christian year. In uh, session two, uh, we, uh, we, we looked at uh, that, uh, Advent, uh, we discussed how difficult Advent is as a season to manage. Uh, the, the conflicts that emerge continue to, uh, uh, to plague uh, across traditions. Uh, pastors, musicians, uh, if you're of a liturgical or a liturgical church, uh, the liturgy committees, etc. But the, the difficulties that are present may instead be opportunities with great possibility. It, it should not be our intention to allow Advent to be overcome by Christmas. Regardless of where a congregation enters into Advent, uh, there is, there's entirely too much of it there. Uh, Biblically, theologically, historically, pastorally, and musically. It, it, it's something that's very important. It's a, it's a very important season. And everyone needs a, a pause, I guess if nothing else, uh, from the frenzy of December to reflect and pray. Uh, and everyone also needs a time to rejoice. And that's, that's the opportunity that, uh, that Advent gives us. Uh, let's look first here at it. We talked about this last week. At an Anglican Advent prayer, which really captures many of the themes we, we've uh, uh, talked about here. And, and again, I'll just quickly read it. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when she, he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, uh, again, we have, we have the great themes of, of Christ who came to us and then Christ who will come again to, uh, to judge the living and the dead. Um, finally here, uh, in terms of review, uh, planning Advent worship is a great challenge. It, it's, a, it's a relatively short season, uh, and, and there are so many rich and varied resources available it's difficult to kind of narrow down what, what to use. Um, but we, we have looked at a collection of the resources, and as I've said, uh, you'll be getting those in, in the ebook that we'll be sending to you. Um, in, in every case, though, uh, congregations should be encouraged to maintain a distinction between Advent and Christmas. Uh, the, the latter should be for the celebration of Christ's birth on Christmas Day, and then um, follows throughout the season. So. Let's get started here with uh, session three, uh, the arts in Advent worship. A Advent, as you see here, is a season for seeing, hearing, touching, and imagining. Advent scripture readings are filled with, uh, with evocative images, and Advent anticipation has inspired some of the most cherished music in the Christian church, and we'll look at, at that a bit uh, toward, the, uh, toward the end of our session here. Uh, every tradition of Christian worship has developed meaningful ways of leading Advent worship through the arts. And so uh, here in this session, we'll, we'll be looking at a few of those. We'll start with the, uh, the environment in Advent worship. Uh, Advent worship involves both penitence and joy. Uh, these, these moods are conveyed.
made by the visual environment uh, of the worship space, perhaps better than anything else. So how does one, how do we uh, decorate for Advent in a manner that, uh, that respects the sobriety of the season, uh, that, that gives us a sense of waiting and longing? Let's look at that. Uh, first, and, and uh, I, I've, we, I've listed three here for us. Uh, there are many others, but um, some ideas. Uh, strip away the, uh, the harvest bounty of, of uh, November. November with its uh, themes of, of Thanksgiving, at least here in, in the United States, um, uh, themes of uh, the, 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 uh, the summer coming to an end. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of festive colors. So uh, that's something to strip away, simplify and clean the worship space, clean the entryways. Uh, and then t- take, a, take a long walk out of doors. I, I think, I, I don't know where everyone is uh, listening from, but I think in uh, most parts of the world, um, at least uh, in the northern hemisphere, uh, it's, uh, we, we have the bleakness of winter. And that's, that's, uh, that really kind of gets you in the mood. I mean, it's odd to say, but it kind of gets you in the mood for, for preparing Advent services. Uh, it, it should bring reminders of winter, uh, and and we should we should refrain from uh, cute decorations, but uh, focus on that uh, that we are mortal. That, that Christ, uh, while he came as a baby, uh, came as the, um, the the suffering servant, as the one who gave his life, so that we could have life. And so that uh, that is uh, a key theme of Advent. Next, uh, in, in contrast to uh, Christmas. Uh, uh, which is uh, the church's second spring, um, the, 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 we, we should uh, thematically um, uh, banish, uh, think, think about uh, um, banishing uh, things that, uh, that, that winter includes, um, that, that uh, Christmas, as I said here, is, um, is the second spring in, in contrast to Advent. So that's something that, that you would focus on then. Uh, here, uh, just some ideas for the environment. Uh, use natural wintry materials. Uh, you can transform these with uh, lights and, and greens. Um, near the font, near the baptismal font, uh, you'd be encouraged to have images of John the Baptist and Isaiah. Um, these, these can actually be used throughout the two seasons. Uh, the genealogy of, uh, of Jesus is properly part of the days of Christmas time. Uh, you can you can flow back a bit to the uh, especially the final uh, seven days of Advent. Uh, that's the week, and we talked about this last week that uh, that you use the the O antiphons, and uh, those will be listed in your ebook. Um, the the Jesse tree, uh, the, the parish where the church's Christmas tree, in other words, uh, can be set up on on December 17th, uh, the week before Christmas, in the vestibule or the gathering place. Um, ornaments that have been prepared throughout uh, Advent can be put uh, on the tree at, uh, at uh, Christmas on Christmas Eve. Uh, Advent wreaths, and we'll talk a bit more about these in a second. Advent wreaths uh, may be suspended, uh, putting, uh, putting your wreath in a fixed position like a table. Uh, it, it, uh, that that um, kind of defeats its purpose because really the, the Advent uh, wreath should be something that, that turns uh, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't need to be decorated with ribbons uh, or small banners or uh, a brightly colored candle, um, nor should the image of uh, the wreath be forsaken um, in, in favor of the, the candle set in a row. Uh, the circle is the primary symbol. Uh, the, the candles really are the secondary part. And so toward that end, uh, and I, I've seen this before, something like, like an old wagon wheel is used, or something similar. It makes a sturdy frame uh, for a suspended wreath. Um, also, uh, I, again, just things that I've, I've uh, seen and, and appreciated. Um, large beeswax candles are, are typically uh, more reliable and, and aesthetically pleasing than, than colored uh, paraffin pillar candles, uh, which, which uh, too often drown in their own wicks. The right combination of, uh, of fixtures can be uh, like even plumbing fixtures can be turned into candle holders, something very creative. Uh, hang it with a garland, and um, it, the, uh, the rotating wheel then becomes a, a very powerful symbol. In, in terms of colors, historically speaking, uh, deep purple 
was, has been used for vestments. Uh, this actually had more to, though, to do with uh, what dye stuffs were available uh, than with any particular significance uh, as opposed to other shades of purple. So again, we're speaking, uh, speaking of centuries past. Uh, the vesture uh, for penitential seasons came in every shade from blood red to blue black. Uh, somberness and sobriety are the primary aim of the colors, and that's why uh, festive purples or light blues are traditionally uh, inappropriate for, uh, for both Advent and Lent. Uh, the commercial nature of the season often uh, impacts the congregation's uh, expectations for this time of year. Uh, for example, uh, the weekend after Thanksgiving, of course, there are uh, always a large number of parishioners who want to know where the crush is. Uh, people are more and more uh, seem to be mimicking the early decorations of the, the shopping malls in their homes, the, the very festive things. Um, really, I think most people regard Advent as, as just another word for, for the holiday season, and, uh, and that really is not the case. Um, even, if the, um, even if the church holds off on poinsettias until the 25th, th there's often pressure to decorate the worship space with, with evergreen throughout. Um, Advent um, is, um, I guess... Uh, that often that the case is so that uh, because those are on sale, that's the time to get them. But really, try try to resist the temptation to do this. Uh, just because the church may have an Advent wreath, there's no reason to hang wreaths all over the church on the front door and and uh, throughout the church. Uh, besides, if the wreath is large, if it's uh, large and well constructed, and um, the church is simplified and clean. Uh, you'll not need to do much more to create a suitable environment uh, to, to uh, have, have it, uh, the, the Advent atmosphere. Uh, since the scripture readings for Advent are filled with so many Im images, Advent banners are, are helpful in portraying their message in a, a powerful and symbolic way. Uh, always begin preparations for Advent by considering the scripture lessons that you'll be, uh, they'll be using and and last week we touched on uh, a number of, uh, of uh, readings that are appropriate for Advent, and again, you'll be getting those. But um, uh, in, in nearly every church, there's someone who, who would take uh, delight and uh, would, would be quite pleased to, to develop a banner. And so I, I wanted to just quickly here uh, give you an example of, of something that, that perhaps could be done. Um, Several Advent lessons, of course, talk about preparing the way of the Lord uh, so that um, uh, the, the, the path should be made straight, level, and smooth. So th this would suggest to me a banner uh, that shows a road beginning with a dark, rocky, kind of a, an, an ominous feel. Uh, gradually, the, the way the road becomes straighter and smoother. But the, what I would see, the idea of progression here, uh, can can be presented in a very effective and and uh, uh, costly, uh, very inexpensive, at no cost at all. Um, if the banner is made so that uh, each each Sunday uh, each Sunday each of the four Sundays a new section of the road can be revealed, set it up so that it it, it has is divided in force, and you can um, you can uh, include you can have something to pull away so that it's uh, progressively uh, revealed. So at the beginning, uh, the road would have many twists and turns. Uh, there, there, it, would, it would seem to be a road with little progress. Uh, the roughness of the terrain can be set, or suggested with um, uh, stuffed or irregular shapes, uh, coarse, dark fabric uh, could be used. Um, the shapes can be sewn and stuffed separately and then uh, attached to the banner. And uh, again, it doesn't have to be an individual. You could uh, be assigned to a class or, or to um, uh, just a group of people who would enjoy doing this. Uh, these gradually then would give away to a quilted area uh, with stitched furrows and ridges, and along the way the road becomes straighter and the curves become more gentle. Finally then, uh, at the end, the road is straight, uh, the earth is flat and smooth, progression of the colors and textures. Um, you, you begin with uh, dark browns and grays and then change to Oh, like like middle value browns and uh, gray greens, and then continue with slightly more intense greens, and then finally uh, use uh, like a light uh, clear yellow green. Uh, use a smooth soft fabric like velour, 
and then perhaps uh, put a suggestion of a village at the end of the road, which re uh, marks the arrival point, the, the end of your journey. Let's then uh, next look at, uh, we talked about the Advent, Advent uh, wreath, but let, let's look at it just a little more specifically. Uh, the Advent wreath, uh, which uh, as uh, we talked about before, uh, hangs at the, traditionally hangs at the front of the church as five candles. Uh, it symbolizes the coming of Christ. In, in the past couple of decades, the, uh, the ancient custom of uh, the Advent wreath has, uh, for, for many years, it, it, it was something that might be used in the home or might be used in, in, in highly liturgical churches, but now it seems to be uh, enjoying a recovery as, uh, as a symbol and uh, in many ways does for Advent uh, what the, uh, the manger, uh, the crest does for, for Christmas. While, um, while uh, again, looking historically, the, we don't know the specific uh, origins of the Advent, Advent wreath. We do have a general idea that began uh, many centuries ago in, in what is now Eastern Germany and uh, was associated with the, uh, the Yule tradition of burning lights. By the, uh, the 16th century, though, the, the lights became Advent symbols in Christian homes. And from that tradition, uh, the custom of a different candle to represent each of the four weeks of Advent was developed. Uh, originally, the Advent wreath was a wreath of evergreens. Uh, placed in a circle containing uh, uh, four candles. Each Sunday, uh, a different candle was lighted until all four candles uh, shed their light together. Uh, the, the gradual increase of light, of course, as you can uh, guess, symbolized the, the growing anticipation of the birth of Jesus. And uh, while a ready-made wreath, of course, can be purchased at a Christian bookstore or, or even at, um, at um, general stores, uh, Target, Walmart, etc. Uh, you may prefer to make your own. Uh, again, much like the banner, it's it's just a very it's a way to to uh, get members of your church to to um, enjoy part of being part of the process. Um, just, just remember though to uh, to place uh, the four Advent candles around the outer rim, and then the final candle, the what's known as the uh, the Christ candle, in the middle. Um, each week's uh, Advent service, of course, has a different emphasis. Uh, this emphasis is articulated throughout the, the scripture readings, uh, with each candle representing a step toward Jesus' birth. And we won't go through all the readings, but just kind of as a refresher uh, from, uh, from last week. Uh, first week, waiting for the birth of Christ. Uh, second week, preparation for the birth. Uh, third week, the joy of, of waiting. Uh, the, the fourth week, the incarnation. Uh, of the, of the, um, the word and the womb of uh, Mary. And then finally, the fifth candle, the Christ candle, which uh, represents his birth. Um, the, the, uh, with, uh, with the colors of the candles, uh, you want to symbolize the, the twin themes of Advent, uh, preparation and joy. Since preparation is solemn and uh, penitential, uh, the first, second, and fourth candles should be dark blue or purple. Uh, the third candle, which symbolizes the joy of anticipation, is, is always uh, rose-colored. And then, uh, of course, uh, the, the Christ candle, the fifth candle, is white. And um, it, it's, it's a symbol of, uh, of celebrating uh, the birth of our Lord. You can, um, uh, in terms of positioning, you could place the Advent wreath on a stand, uh, hang it from a ceiling, or uh, place it in a, a central location. It, it has, though, uh, it, it enhances uh, the, the Advent worship to have uh, the wreath in a place where the entire congregation can uh, see it and uh, be re reminded of what uh, of, of the meaning. Next, look at, let's look at uh, hymns and songs for Advent. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, focus a little more on this section since uh, so many of you are, uh, are worship leaders. Um, and, and choir directors, so um, I have a very brief section at the end that deals with uh, Advent dance, believe it or not, but we'll, we'll, uh, most of uh, what our conclusion here will be, we'll, we'll be dealing with, uh, with uh, hymns and songs. So uh, as a reminder, Advent uh, symbolizes uh, distinct historical events in Scripture, uh, Christ's second coming, uh, the prophetic ministry of John the Baptist, and the, uh, the angelic annunciation. Um, 
Advent begins with the broadest scope in, in prophetic time and then narrows that time to the specific point of the Annunciation of, of Christ's birth. The, the spirit of worship, then, is one of hope, uh, expectancy. It's, uh, it's uh, certainty that the, uh, the, prof- uh, the prophetic statements of uh, Jesus' birth are true. Uh, it, it's an historical affirmation of Christ's first coming and a glad expectation of uh, his second advent. It, it's a reality to come. And this is, a, of course, a, a true hope uh, of the believer. Uh, let's look here. This, this is all sort of encapsulated in uh, Titus uh, 2, uh, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people of his own possession who are zealous for good works. So as we said, it's, uh, it's, it's four Sundays. Uh, the first immediately follows the last Sunday after Pentecost, or the Sunday uh, is known as the Sunday of Fulfillment. Uh, the final one is the Sunday nearest Christmas Eve, uh, the nativity season, uh, of, of just as an aside, uh, is Christmas Eve, uh, Christmas dawn, uh, Christmas day, and then the first and second Sundays uh, prior to January 6th. So that, that, is, uh, that is the Christmas season. Uh, the, uh, just to have this slide up here as a reminder, uh, congregational selections for uh, Advent music uh, reflect the, the three themes that we, we described before. Um, of course, more than one theme, as uh, all of you know, is typically incorporated into a song, not always, but, but, but quite often. So let's look at some tra- traditional Advent hymns and songs, and uh, we'll, we'll touch on their, their scriptural themes. Uh, this, this, of course, will be a representative list. I have about a, a dozen songs here that I, I tried to find uh, song, hymns and songs that, that, that kind of covered all the themes. And so the, I have about a dozen of these here. Uh, just to, to give you an idea, um, once, uh, of course, your, your, uh, from your experiences, uh, you'll have many to draw from. But uh, we'll just run very quickly through these. Um, uh, the first one, a message came to a maiden young uh, from Luke 1, 26 through 29. Um, I-, I won't read this whole passage, but uh, the, the, this, is, uh, this uh, concerns the angel Gabriel uh, who came to, um, uh, came to, uh, to Mary. Uh, the Advent Canticle uh, from, uh, from John 1, 1 through 3 and 14. Uh, the beginning was the word. Uh, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, again, very, uh, very familiar uh, passage and a very uh, familiar Advent uh, path, uh, theme. Uh, the Advent of Our God from Philippians uh, 2, 5 through 7. Uh, the Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came from uh, Luke 1, 26 through 27. Arise, Sons of the Kingdom. Uh, from Luke 19:38b, uh, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. What a wonderful, wonderful verse. Uh, a, a classic, come thou long expected Jesus from Matthew 21:5. Uh, uh, Behold, your King is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey. Uh, one, uh, again, a, a classic, direct, taken directly from Isaiah 41. Uh, comfort, comfort my people. Uh, creators, creator of the stars of night uh, from Philippians 2, uh, where uh, every knee shall bow. Hail him, the king of glory from Matthew 25. Uh, the Son of Man will come in his glory. Uh, hail to the Lord's um, anointed. This is, uh, I think, one of the most powerful passages in Scripture from Isaiah 61. Uh, I will read this one. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has set sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, a comfort to, uh, to comfort all who mourn. Wonderful. Uh, Hills of the, noise, uh, the North uh, Rejoice, again, uh, anticipation here from uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, I long for you. From uh, Psalms, uh, Psalm 84, many uh, as, as you know, many psalm passages are, um, 
are used for Advent songs. Oops, sorry. Uh, Jesus came, the heavens adoring. Uh, you may not think of this uh, classic Gaither song as uh, as an Advent song, but um, if, if you've read any of Gloria Gaither's um, uh, books, you know that, um, that uh, she has a keen interest in liturgy, and uh, this, this, uh, that song was drawn from, from Jude 1.14. Um, not quite so uh, familiar, I guess, from long ago, Prophets Neil. Uh, another thing, My Soul Magnifies the Lord, from, um, from Luke uh, 146. Probably the most famous, uh, the most famous of all, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, drawn from uh, Isaiah 714, um, the threefold truth from Acts um, 111, where they're, they're um, standing and looking into heaven, and then he will come again. Uh, him uh, veiled in darkness, Judah lay in the theme of darkness. Uh, what a day that will be! Looking forward to the future, um, we'll see your Lord a coming. This, um, this, uh, I don't know if this is familiar to all of you, but it, it, it's a wonderful, um, a wonderful spiritual and, um, and uh, enjoyed by many. Um, so anyway, again, I, we'll have a longer list. I, I see that we're, this is a 30-minute session. I see we're coming up at the bottom of the hour, so I will uh, I'll move quickly here um, to Advent dance. And as, as far as um, as music is concerned, we we'll have more selections in uh, the the, uh, the book we'll be getting, and with all the uh, the biblical themes that, that are associated with those. Um, let's see here the. Um, um, Find my place here. The uh, what what I have here is uh, is uh, an entrance dance uh, with uh, with prayers uh, centering around the the Advent wreath, and it's uh, based on the the uh, well known hymn, as I mentioned before, "O Come and Come, Emmanuel." And we'll just look at the verses and and some of the related activities that can take place. In, in many churches, of course, this this would not be. Uh, an accepted practice, but uh, it is an art. So we'll include it here briefly at the end. Um, the uh, on the words, "O come, O come," uh, the procession moves down the aisle, arms stretched in front, uh, palms facing up. Uh, you can, as you as you put this together, you could have your people uh, practice holding their arms out in a way to uh, uh, really feel uh, as as though they're uh, they're an extension of of the person seeking seeking the Lord. Uh, that mourns in lowly exile here, the, the leader with the, the wreath stops. Uh, everyone bows in the waist, lowering arms at this point. Uh, in, this, uh, in the third verse, uh, the sequence has changed, and we'll talk about that just in a second. Until the Son of God appears, uh, all raise up and uh, lift their arms as before. Then the chorus, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Uh, a, a, a double line then can uh, separate as everyone turns to face his or her partner. Uh, while taking a, uh, a step backward, uh, opening arms wide to the sides in a joyful manner, uh, a pathway then, of course, is formed uh, through which the leader can uh, can uh, bring the wreath down the middle. Um, th this is uh, easy to improvise uh, uh, in, in a number of ways. Uh, at that point, then the leader would be at the um, the head of the line for the, for the next passage. Uh, so come to the O Israel. Um, the leader continues. In the front, as the rest uh, link arms with their, their partners, uh, raise their arms and, and swing uh, in, in, uh, in around one time in the center of the aisle. Uh, they, they end up with their arms down by their sides, then, um, just uh, as, as they were before in the original line. Then you can repeat this entire sequence, uh, progressing toward the altar, uh, while the assembly sings the second verse in chorus. Uh, by the beginning of the third verse, the leader places the wreath on a table. And the double line separates the left and right, and everyone encircles the table. Uh, lead, uh, you, would, you would not bow at that point. Uh, by the beginning of the third uh, chorus, all are standing still facing the table. Then uh, the chorus the third time, uh, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. On rejoice, rejoice, uh, all take a step toward the altar, uh, holding hands and lifting their arms. Uh, on Emmanuel, all back away, lowering arms, um, releasing their hands, um, and then uh, here, uh, shall come to thee, O Israel. Um, all, all turn in place, arms lifted. Uh, the minister lights the first candle. Uh, on the second week, uh, the 
second candle is lit, and uh, uh, prayers are said for Advent. The minister uh, joins the group. Uh, they all circle the table, hands joined, uh, as the verses are sung or, or hummed. And um, the, it's, it's, uh, it's a way to incorporate movement, basically. Obviously, something like this is not uh, intricate, and as I said before, it's certainly not for every church. Actually, a, a, a large church wouldn't be able to, to engage in, in something uh, even this active. But uh, dance is an art, so, uh, so there it is. Well, tomorrow, our, our final session in this series, uh, we'll be looking at some, uh, some very, we'll look specifically at some Advent services, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be gathering at the same time. Real quickly, all of this material uh, has been gathered from uh, liturgies.com. Uh, many of you have seen this before, uh, complete service plans uh, for just about every tradition, uh, plans for house churches, small groups, etc. Uh, we have uh, plans for every Sunday of the calendar year, uh, sacred actions like baptism, weddings. Uh, there is a service builder uh, that you can use to, uh, to build your plan. And uh, there are, th this is, uh, many have told me this is the most exciting part of it. Uh, we, we have currently about almost 3,000 resources, uh, about 600 contributors, uh, but this will be growing to tens of thousands uh, here in the next uh, few months uh, or weeks and months, and it, it actually will never stop growing. Uh, it will be the go-to place for, um, for uh, worship resources. Um, there, are, there are small group studies and Bible studies uh, uh, in, uh, in the library. There's a, there's a daily office, a daily reading plan that, uh, that you can uh, send out as an email to your, your congregation. And that uh, includes uh, Old Testament psalm, um, New Testament and gospel readings each day with a prayer and a devotional. And uh, you can go, as you see here, your first month is free. And um, again, I thank you. I guess we're not at session one, are we? We're at session, uh, session three. But anyway, thank you for joining us today. And may the Lord continue to bless you in your ministries. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.